Shut up, better explain this. Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I'm here with part two of my August wrap up for 2018. I read a total of 14 books this month, so these are the last seven that I read. So without further ado, let us get started. The first three that I have are actually all part of the same trilogy and that is Mary Rutowski's The Winner's Curse trilogy. So the first book is The Winner's Curse, second is The Winner's Crime, and third is The Winner's Kiss. I ended up giving all three of these books a four out of five stars. I actually really enjoyed the entire trilogy. I'm only gonna hold up one because you grow lazy. This series follows a 17 year old Kestrel who is the daughter of the Valorian general. One day when she's in town she stumbles across a slave auction and she ends up buying a Harani boy named Arin, and as she gets to know Arin, secrets from his life begin to come to light, and that's when she needs to decide who she's going to side with. So like I said, I really enjoyed this entire trilogy. I thought that it was a very well done trilogy. I really liked Kestrel as a main character and how her intelligence was more of a focus than her beauty. I really liked watching how her mind worked and how she was able to plan the war that went on and the strategy behind what she was going to do. I also really liked how Arin was equally as intelligent as Kestrel and they both worked very well with each other. The one thing I will say is that I did enjoy the slow burn romance but in the first book at least I was very confused where it even came from because they didn't really seem to like each other at all and then all of a sudden it was like, okay, I like you. But there was no sense of development of the relationship. It just kind of was thrown at us after a while. I do think that as the story progressed it became more obvious about how they felt for each other and it did make more sense but at least in the first book the relationship was very dysfunctional in my opinion. It was built off of deceit and lies and it just I don't think it was the most healthy, but as it progressed, it did get better. I think as this trilogy progressed, it became a lot more interesting plot-wise. The first book was a bit slow, in my opinion. The Winner's Crime definitely picked up the pace. It became a lot more interesting. I liked the concept of the moth. Once you read the book, you'll know what I'm talking about. I definitely think the ending of this book was a great cliffhanger. It definitely had me hooked and wanting to read the last in this series, which is The Winner's Kiss, which I think was definitely my favorite of the series. I think it was a great conclusion. I think that the writing style of this particular book was so well done. It was actually really interesting because the author would have Kestrel's point of view as well as Arn's point of view in the same chapter, but it was like alternating paragraphs, so you would see what Kestrel was going through at one point and then what Arn was going through at the same time, but they're in different places. And it was just so cool the way it was written. Like, I highly recommend this trilogy if you haven't read it yet. It is so well done. The next book you guys probably saw me talk about in my last two reading vlogs because it took me like two weeks to read this book which never happens but oh my god this book blew my mind. It's Abomination by Gary Witta and this is the author of The Book of Eli. It is just such a masterpiece. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The book follows Wolfric who once helped King Alfred the Great defeat the Norse in battle, and he wants nothing more than to just live a quiet, simple life with his wife, Quen. It's not long for Wolfric before he is summoned to the king again in order to help rid the world of this new threat. A power-hungry archbishop has discovered a set of scrolls written in Old Latin, and he deciphers the code, which essentially allows him to turn creatures into these beasts that they're calling abominations. Along the way, Wolfric meets a young warrior named Indra who wants to prove to her overbearing father that she can be the first female soldier of the order which is a group of monster slayers. In order to do this Indra has to hunt down her own abomination and cut off its head and bring it to her father and it's basically how their stories intertwine. So like I said this book was a lot. It took me two weeks to read. It usually takes me about two to three days to read a book so the fact that this took two entire weeks is insane. It was such 
a mind fuck. Like, I'm not gonna lie, I had to put this book down so many times just because I was like, what is happening? And I couldn't read it. The book is a perfect blend of horror and fantasy. It's very character driven, so you get a lot of backstory to figure out why the characters chose the path that they did. I really loved Indra and Wolfric as main characters and the relationship that they end up having in the end is just so well done. I found the whole concept of the abominations to be so interesting and the author does such an amazing job at describing what each of them look like and it is so easy to picture them in your head like it was so vivid. The twists and turns of the book are so well executed and half the time I did not see them coming and I'm very good at calling books and what's going to happen. The only reason I didn't give it a 5 out of 5 stars is because I felt the first half of the book was very slow. It basically tells why Wolfric is the way that he is 15 years later and it's definitely necessary for the story but it just dragged on for me. Definitely if you're going to read the book push through that first half of it because the second part is so entertaining and it is so worth it in the end like read the book okay just push through okay push through the next book that i have is another colleen hoover book i know i know so controversial but it is ugly love and i still cannot decide if i want to give it a 2.5 or a 3 so i bumped it up to a 3 on goodreads the book follows tate collins who meets miles archer one night outside of her brother's apartment Upon meeting, they both realize that they have an attraction to each other, so they decide that they're going to have a no-strings-attached relationship. Before they start this relationship, they decide that they're going to have two rules that Miles puts forth, don't ask about the past and don't expect a future. So like I said, I can't decide what I think of this book. I have a love-hate relationship with Colleen Hoover, and this was definitely not one of my favorites of hers. The first half of the book was just not good. Pretty much the first half of the book was just Tate going on and on and on about how Miles has abs and he knows how to do laundry and he has abs and he's just so hot because he has abs and it was just, it got to the point where I was like, okay, I get it, he has abs cool. I do also think that the whole relationship was very toxic. I did not like it one bit, but I will say that I liked the second half of the book once you figure out why Miles is the way he is. I don't condone his actions, but it does make sense, but the relationship is still a no-no for me. I did like the alternating perspectives and learning more of Miles' backstory and why he was such a prick for the entire book, but still not the biggest fan. I will say though, that Cap was my favorite character and I honestly just want an entire book full of Cap. The last two books that I have are graphic novels and they're part of the same series. The first is Five Worlds The Sand Warrior and the second is Five Worlds The Cobalt Prince and these are both by Mark Siegel. I gave them both 2.5 stars. They weren't my favorite favorite. It follows five worlds who are in danger of extinction basically and in order to save the five worlds these three unlikely heroes have to team up together in order to light these beacons that are on each of the worlds. I have this love-hate relationship with graphic novels because I really love the pictures and I like the colors and how vibrant most of them are, but I always find that the plot is so rushed, which makes sense because they're so short. But I just always feel like I can't connect to the characters, I can't connect to the storyline, and it just feels very rushed to me. But they were cute for what they were. The little blurb says that it's for fans of The Last Airbender. I've never personally seen The Last Airbender, but a lot of people seem to love that show, so if you're a fan, then maybe check them out. I did really like learning about the five worlds. I'm assuming that there's going to be five books in the series because the first book followed one world, the second book followed another world, so I'm assuming the third book that's coming out, which is called The Red Maze, is going to follow the third world. They were cute for what they were, but they're definitely not my favorite graphic novels that I've read. Alright guys, so those were the next seven books that I read for the month of August. Let me know down below what you guys read for this month and what you thought of them, and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye! <laughs>